And so Hajj is literally a recognition of, of, of this bonding of human beings together. And this is why for 1400 years, the Prophet ﷺ reestablished this ancient rite, which is, we believe, uh, Abrahamic, uh, going back to the, the, the father of the monotheistic traditions, Abraham ﷺ, that he established the rites of the Hajj, and the Prophet ﷺ purified them and reformulated them for the last stage of human life on earth. And so the person who goes on the Hajj is literally moving to the house of God from the house, from the dunya, from this realm of the mundane to the realm of the super mundane, of that which literally goes beyond the world, and enters into an otherworldly place. Mecca is quite literally otherworldly, and anybody who's ever entered into the haram knows exactly what I'm talking about. When you enter into the haram, you enter into a realm that is no longer part of the world. It's literally quite outside of the world. And, and I can guarantee you, you have to experience this. And those of you that have been blessed with this experience really understand exactly what I'm talking about. But this is like, um, it's what Imam al-Ghazali would call a zoki knowledge, a knowledge of taste. It's not a knowledge that can be articulated like the taste of honey or the sweetness of intimacy between a man and a woman. These things cannot be articulated on the tongue. They have to be experienced by the individual. And this is part of, of the power of the Kaaba itself is entering into the the jadab or the magnetic uh, nature of the Kaaba uh, which uh, Ibrahim salam, said to make he asked God to make the hearts of some of humanity minanasi as either the minanasi some of humanity to incline toward this house that their hearts literally incline toward it and so each year all over the world people prepare to make this journey to Mecca, to the house of God. And there are people from every color, from every tongue, from uh, the male and the female, from literally every human uh, inhabited place on the earth, people set out. You see in the house, you see people from white Russia, you see people from the Caucasus Mountains, you see people from China, you see people from Indonesia, from Philippines, from Japan, you see people from the United States, you see people from Canada, from South America, you see people from every continent and every country in the world, represented symbolically as one humanity. And this is literally the realm that transcends nationalism. It is to see the vision of human beings like the one who sees the earth from the moon. You see, once you've, once you've seen the earth from the moon, uh, the, the boundaries that men divide their worlds by suddenly dissipate and no longer have any importance or meaning. And this is part of the experience of literally going to Hajj, is recognizing that human boundaries themselves are an illusion that we set up, that God has not placed those boundaries on us, we have placed those boundaries on ourselves. That God has made us from one self, and from that self made its opposite, and from the opposites made all of uh, humankind. And this is the recognition that takes place in uh, the house of Allah. And so we go literally into Mecca, into a state of ihram. And the state of ihram is to enter into a state of sanctity. It comes from the word haram or haram, which means sanctity, to be in an inviolable state. And the human being enters into his birthright, which is inviolability. That the nafs, the nafs itself is inviolable. And yet, outside of Mecca, the, the, the nature of human beings is that they violate the dignity and the sanctity of the self. In Mecca, this is absolutely prohibited. And this is why it says in the Quran that God has made it a place of aman, amna, which means security. Sawa'an fi al-aqib wal bad. Everyone is equal in this place. The one coming from the far place and the one who lived there himself. And so even the Meccan is the same as the one who's distant. In other words, the, the one who is native to that city has no more right to that city than the one coming from the most distant place. And this is literally to break down the diseases of provincialism, of tribalism, of nationalism. That we have to transcend these things that are divisive, these things that literally uh, create uh, this antagonism between human beings. And we enter into a realm that is literally a recognition of our common bond as human beings, of our common humanity. And so we enter into this place saying, Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. And this means, at your service, I'm answering the call. 
I am answering the call. That this is a call. Walillahi ala nas hijjul bayt. Liman istata'a ilayhi sabila. That, that God has a right upon humankind that they make a pilgrimage to his house. And this is an invitation. It's literally a da'wah. It's a da'wah, which means an invitation. It is God's invitation to his house. To all of humankind. And it's an open invitation to anyone who wants to enter into that house. This is an open invitation from, from the creator of the heavens and the earth to human society, enter into my house. Enter in peace, in a state of tranquility and security. And if we choose to accept that call, then we enter into what's called a state of Islam or submission to God. Which should not be in any way, for those of you who are not Muslim should not, not be in any way associated with the state religions of the so-called Muslim world. When I say Islam, I'm not talking in any way about the, the religion of the constitution of Egypt or the religion of the constitution of Saudi Arabia or the religion of the constitution of uh, Indonesia or wherever. That is not the Islam I'm talking about. That's another Islam. Just unfortunately has the same name and people get them confused. 